not believe it, it's Christmas tomorrow! I am so excited, I've got my, all my presents like super duper epically wrapped and I like literally, I'm like so excited to just give them all my presents for my family to open them like, Suzanne, are you ready for Christmas? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super duper ready for Christmas. <laughs> I just love Christmas so much. Can you see it? Like, oh my goodness, it's the best holiday ever. Like opening presents, Woo! Suzanne, wake up! We gotta film a video, Suzanne! We gotta film a video! I have to go get my Christmas presents! What?! It's a cr Christmas! Where are you going?! It's in the middle of November! Ah! Hello and welcome to Trinity Kids! We are so glad you guys are here and not sleeping through today's video like someone over there. Hey, since it gets dark at like five, and you know, you're a lot to deal with sometimes, I just needed a nap. <laughs> Ouch, I like honestly, like I, I understand I can be a little loud and crazy sometimes, but what was all that panic over Christmas? It's the middle of November. I had this dream and it felt so real. Like, do you know those kinds of dreams that just feel so real you think it's real life? Yeah, I've, I've, I've had those before, but usually there's something kind of crazy that's going on. Yeah. I mean, you were wearing an elf onesie. What? Me? Are you kidding? There's not... Me? Oh, man of my stature would never wear an elf onesie. Are you kidding me? It's crazy. Yeah, I was definitely shocked. And since I was so worried about Christmas shopping when I woke up, I had to rush out and go. Well, I was glad I was able to catch you. You are pretty dang fast. Yeah, I try. I am super fast. And... We're part of the Trinity Kids. We are. And that means we get to live out these four values. Are you guys ready? First, love Jesus because God is love and loved us first. Second, love others because God loves all people. Third, change the world because it's not only about us. And fourth, have fun because God gives us joy. And nothing like a little bit of Trinity Kids values to brighten our days. Am I right there, Suzanne? A hundred percent. And in today's story, we're going to be talking about Joseph. So buckle up, it's gonna be a wild ride. Here we go. Okay, so this story is like super duper long and there's so much that happens. So I think it would be like a good idea to spice it up. What is spice it up supposed to mean? Well, honestly, I, Brady, will be acting out every single character in said story. That's like actually impossible. There's like no way, dude. No Are you way. you kidding me? It might be a little tough, but honestly, I think it's gonna be so much fun. And don't even get me started. You gotta do a difficult task too here. See, we're gonna be telling the story first, all the way through, second time, it's gonna be done in a minute, and then 15 seconds. What? Are you kidding me? Of course. All right. Let's go. Let's do it. Joseph was Jacob's favorite child. And one day, Jacob made Joseph a coat of many colors. This made his brothers angry since he was the youngest. Then Joseph had a dream that one day his brothers would bow down to him, and that made his brothers very angry. Jacob one day wanted Joseph to go see his brothers who were grazing their flocks in the fields far away from home. When they saw Joseph coming in the distance, they plotted to kill him. Reuben the oldest overheard what the other brothers were planning, and he told them that they can't kill Joseph and just throw him into a deep well instead. That way, nobody would find him. When Joseph arrived, they took his robe and threw him into the well. Reuben was planning on saving him later, but some merchants came by and the brothers took Joseph out of the well and sold him to the Midianites for 20 pieces of silver. Basically, chump change, like nothing. The Midianites took Joseph to Egypt to sell him. Reuben returned to the well to see that Joseph was gone. And his, he went to his brothers and found out that they had sold him. So they dipped his coat in goat's blood to make it seem like he was killed. They took that coat back to Jacob and said that they found the coat and asked if it was Joseph's coat. They lied to their father that Jacob was dead or that Joseph was dead and Jacob became so upset that his favorite son had been killed. Meanwhile, in Egypt, Joseph's soul was sold to Pharaoh's official Potiphar. While Joseph lived in his master's house, he prepared or he prospered and prepared things because God was with him. 
The Lord gave Joseph success in everything he did, so Potiphar put him in charge of his entire house. Then one day, Potiphar's wife tried to blame Joseph for something he didn't do. And when Potiphar heard this, that lie, he was so angry with Joseph. He sent him to prison. While Joseph was in prison, the Lord was still with him. Joseph again found favor in the eyes of the prison warden, which was the head guard, and was put in charge of all the prisoners. What? He's a prisoner in charge of prisoners? Then two years later, Pharaoh had a crazy dream, and he needed someone to figure out what it meant. He called all the magicians and wise men, but they couldn't uncover what the dream meant. So then Pharaoh called upon Joseph to see if he could discover what the dream was all about. Joseph said he couldn't do it, but God could. So God helped Joseph decipher the dream. He told Pharaoh that the dream meant that there was going to be seven years with food and seven years with no food. And after seeing Joseph's trust in God and God's care for him, Pharaoh promoted Joseph to second in charge of the whole country of Egypt. Alrighty, Suzanne, are you ready for one minute challenge this time? I am, I'm ready. All right. That's a really big story. I hope I can hit all the points in one minute. I hope I can get all the pass on in one minute. All right. Joseph was Jacob's favorite child, and one day Jacob made Joseph a coat of many colors. This made his brothers very angry and jealous. And Joseph had a dream that one day his brothers would bow down to him, and that made the brothers mad. Jacob one day wanted Joseph to go see his brothers who were grazing their flock in a field. The brothers saw this, and they plotted to kill him. Reuben, the oldest, was like, no, wait! Don't kill him. Let's throw him in a well instead, woo! But you know what, then some merchants came by and they saw as an opportunity to get rid of Joseph. So they sold him for chump change, 20 pieces of silver, nothing. They took him away to Egypt to sell him, and to sell him. In Egypt, Joseph became in charge of everything. <laughs> and they saved the day. See, wow. guys, that was almost impossible to tell an entire story that big in one minute. I think we missed a few things. Yeah, maybe. But I wonder how it's going to be if we do it in 15 seconds. 15 seconds? I, I don't know. That seems like a challenge. All, All right. right. Are you ready, Suzanne? I'm ready. Let's try it. <gasps> I don't know if I'm ready. Who are all the characters? Whew. I don't even remember. This is going to be hard. I know Joseph's in there. One. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. All right. Joseph. Brothers, angry, Potiphar, lies, <laughs> Egypt, and in charge of all, dreams, interpreted. <laughs> Did we hit all the things? <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. Woo! Woo! That was awesome. Wow, what a rush! That was pretty spicy, wasn't it? Yeah, that was pretty fun. I'm glad we were able to do it, but I was really nervous. What? I mean, yeah. it makes sense. We had to go pretty fast, but I bet so was Joseph. Uh, he had no idea what was gonna happen to him, yet he trusted God would watch over him no matter what, whether he was where he was or what he was doing. Yeah, so God cared for Joseph and blessed him in everything he did. And God cared for the people around him. So no matter what situation he was in, God was there too. Yeah, like in our lives, whether we're at school, at home, or playing with our friends, we know that God is watching over us and that he cares for us. There are plenty of times where we don't feel like God's watching or caring. Right, but because of the story of Joseph, we have proof that no matter what, God cares for us. You know what, Brady? I've got this sweet example to show us that even when it doesn't feel like God is there, that he is. So we have this, these glow sticks here. And you know what, Joseph, he was put in the well. But when he was in the well, God's light shined with him and through him and out of that well. Now the what, next thing. What about Joseph when Joseph was in the prison? You know what, same thing, Brady. When Joseph was in prison, God's light shines through and he, God was with Joseph. Whoa, that was so incredible. Those glow sticks shine through the, all those situations. Exactly, the glow represented God in our situations. He is there and he cares for us, even when we're in a well or in a prison. 
Well, wait a second. I don't think we're going to be the ones that are in the wells of the prisons, but we could be in a situation where we have the same feelings of being trapped, scared, or anxious. That's what I meant. There are times in our lives when we will have similar feelings to Joseph, and in those times, we can remember that God is still shining and that he will continue to watch over us. So let's take a moment and answer these two questions. Why did the brothers treat Joseph the way they did? And think of a time you felt trapped, scared, or anxious. In that situation, how did God care for you? Today's challenge is pretty crazy, and because it's already getting so cold outside, I thought, why don't we bring the cold to us in some form of some frozen t-shirts. So if you've never played or heard of said frozen t-shirt challenge, here's your chance. We're going to be getting two very, very frozen t-shirts and going to have to scrape them, rip them apart until we get the t-shirt back to normal. Then we're going to have to put it on, and the first person to put it on is the ultimate champion. So, are you guys ready to witness the most awesome thing ever? Our t-shirts are going to become flying in here. <laughs> nice and solid. So, so cool. on our marks, are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go! I think it's just, you know, loosening up the water mark particles like that, you know. Yes. Yeah, for real, I'm starting to like, pull up the big guns, no longer. All the all my brain energy has been converted into pure just rip-ability here. I don't even have enough leverage to do something like that yet. I'm really Okay. Oh. That sounded like <laughs> that was what I needed. <laughs> that was some. That was some satisfying cracking right there. It's like when you go to like the, the back fixer guy. The chiropractor. Chiropractor. Yeah, I forgot his name there for a second. <laughs> well, now mine actually resembles a T-shirt. But thank you so much for watching. Oh, and my hands are so freezing. Well, Mine too. see you guys next week. That was awesome. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> hey, Trinity Kids, it has been so much fun doing these boxes along with you each week. This week, we've learned all about Joseph, so you know what? We are going to make some coats. So for our K to threes this week, it's a cool color by number. All right, so you're gonna take your markers, green, blue, yellow, and red, and you're gonna color in based on the different numbers on your thing. Your activity lesson, 
tells you the key and tells you all the different colors and what the colors mean. So Joseph was blue with sadness. So we're gonna color blue. One of the number two is blue. All right, guys, when you're done, you're gonna get this amazing looking picture just to remind you um, all the things that happened to Joseph, but you know what? God still had his back and watched over him through all the things. For our preteens this week, you are gonna do, be doing something similar. You're gonna take your template of your coat. You're gonna write things that happened to Joseph on your strips of paper. So he was thrown into a well. You can cut these a bit smaller so they fit in your coat and decorate your coat like a mosaic and glue the, all the strips of paper on your coat. All right, when you're done, you're gonna have something that resembles this Joseph's coat. All done, all colored up. Again, to remind us that God is watching over us no matter what we do, guys, and what happens to us. And then, guys, I've been having so much fun this last week seeing all your stuff from your October boxes and seeing our filled-in challenge cards and handing out prizes. So don't forget each week to fill in your challenge card to watch the video, do the activity, and then talk about your discussion questions with your family. All right, guys, have a great week. Bye.